Hey yo fans, Jeremy from Sure Forest Bricks and welcome to another unboxing video. I'm just kidding. It's a tips and tricks video. And this is one of those tips and tricks that I've been excited to get into and that is cleaning. And specifically when we talk about cleaning, we're talking about prevention, actually cleaning our models, and then washing. So like washing a used lot or something that gets dirty, dropped in the mud, etc. So washing, cleaning, and prevention. So this is going to be largely a talking head video. I will post up pictures in the upper right hand corner, left hand corner, where it be of uh, things that I'm discussing. However, I didn't have the opportunity to get any of the physical things that I wanted to demonstrate for this video. So when we're talking about prevention, most of the dust, allergens, and dirt from our homes comes from in through the windows, the doors, or us and our pets, etc. So to reduce the dust and stuff, we can largely do that by keeping our homes clean. So sweeping, vacuuming, washing our pets, not tracking dirt all around the house by taking our shoes off of the door, etc. There's a lot of things you can do to mitigate that. And that's your own personal preference um, by how you clean your home or your shop or wherever you have these items in display we're talking about. So that, yeah, you can do a lot for your collection reducing the dust by just keeping your home cleaner. A monthly regiment of dusting, etc., vacuuming, mopping, all that stuff can contribute to lowering the dust. And then the other thing we talk about is in the United States, a lot of our homes are heated by forced air heat. And forced air furnaces are huge contributors of dust in our homes because they're blowing all that air. They're sucking air in and they're blowing it out. And most humans, or most humans, most of the United States does not swap out their air filter furnaces correctly. So we, if you ever go down to your furnace, it's, you know, you'll have a furnace filter and they're usually one inch thick, two inch thick, three inch thick, etc. Those should be swapped out very fairly frequently. So a one inch filter has about one to two months of lifetime. You know, a two inch one is, so for every about one inch of filter, you have one to two months of lifespan. So that means a six inch filter can be a six month interval or a 12 month. And it really depends on a lot of things in the home. But if you change that filter out more often, you're gonna reduce that dust because that filter's collecting that dust. And it's doing so by the filter size, right? So now we're talking about MERV. So you have a low MERV number and a high MERV number. So something like 23 is really high. And most homes realistically should be at that 8 to 10, maybe a 12 MERV because we should be swapping them out. The higher the MERV rating is, the smaller the particle size that it's going to catch. But it's also inducing uh, labor and work and on that motor assembly in your furnace. So a 1 inch 23 MERV filter on an older unit, you're really going to make that furnace work for it. And by that, you're going to, now you're going to be drawing more energy and you're overall going to reduce the furnace life. So we want to talk about that eight to 10, maybe a 12. If you have a dust allergen specifically, that's just something completely different. But if our home should be that eight to 12, eight, maybe a 10, you know, like a 10 and then swapping that out fairly frequently, you know, they're not very expensive. The higher the MERV ones are, but if, if you think about it, you're going to be catching all that larger dust anyway. So if you can swap that out fairly frequently, you're going to reduce the amount of dust in your home considerably. And then the other thing we talk about is our windows. So a lot of the fiberglass window screens or aluminum window screens have had a fairly coarse mesh. There are significant, especially here in the north, a lot of insects can actually go through a standard uh, fiberglass window screen. So if you take and swap those out with something like a, a new mesh or a noceum mesh, it's a, a lot finer of a grid. You're going to also reduce the amount of dust that can come into the home too. And that overall is going to reduce that. So we can reduce the dirt from our, pe uh, our persons or our pets by washing and stuff like that. If we change out our home filter furnaces, we change out our windows or we keep them the collection in an area that's not... Uh, so oftenly uh, exposed to those items, you're going to drastically reduce the dust in the home. 
And that will bring us to our cleaning. So when we talk about cleaning, obviously wiping things down, we talked about mopping and stuff like that. That's gonna, but specifically we're gonna talk about cleaning the actual sets themselves. Cleaning, we're talking about uh, mechanically or via some sort of removal of the dust and debris, right? So you're typically gonna get dust on top and it gets in between the studs, etc. cetera. Um, so <clears throat> primarily a vacuum is gonna be your best bet. And I'm gonna show a couple pictures of, they actually make specific vacuums for clean Lego. So I'll show a picture of that. Um, but any traditional vacuum that you have in your home is gonna work as well. Um, so I find that the brush attachment uh, is your best bet because that's going to get in and around all the little studs. It's going to get in the tiles and it's going to it's going to dislodge the dust. It's going to agitate it and allow the vacuum to suck that dust into itself. Um, how, however, it's not going to break apart pieces. It's not going to knock off antennas. It's not going to be uh, damaging to the model itself. So and there's. I know um, I have the rigid uh, tar car detailing kit, which reduces down from a shop vac, and I'm a big fan of shop vacs, and I'll get into that in a second, but it reduces down so it has a smaller hose, and you have lot, tiny little uh, cr crevice tools and brush uh, brushes on the end and stuff like that, so that could be used in, in um, helping dislodge that, that dust and debris that settles on top of our models. Uh, more so than your traditional home vacuum where it has that large dust or even a traditional shop vac where it has that big brush. That's that's going to work in the large areas, but if you want to get nitty gritty into the details and stuff like that, you really want smaller brushes. So in, in conjunction with using a brush, you can also get acid brushes, uh, tiny paint brushes, etc. Uh, the Q-tip or a cotton swab, that, that's going to help dislodge that dust as well. Um, and we're talking about that in the smaller areas. So we're not talking about cleaning a vast collection with a single cotton swab, you know, only using that in the small areas. That's gonna help dislodge that dust. With the vacuum going, the two combined, it's gonna help. So now we're talking about, I said, I, oh, the vacuum, shop vac. I'm a big fan of shop vacs because most of them still use a bag. And um, we're talking about vacuum cleaners a lot of home vacuum cleaners are canister filter they're using a cyclonic action and then there's a filter pad or a media of some sort that's preventing the dust because the motor has to suck air in and blow air out it has to move air through it um so it's it's pulling air through some sort of filter material and pushing it back out a lot of times we fail to clean our filters of our vacuums the there's a, you know, a foam pad or a mesh of some sort so a lot of times you're bringing that dust in and pushing it right back out because it's either a not a not a very good filter because it, the uh, manufacturer knows that people aren't going to clean it as often, so they want to make that a coarser vacuum filter. <clears throat> or you talking about heavy filter is very tight and needs to be cleaned out very often. But on a bag, it's using that bag, and that bag is containing almost all the dust. So I, mean, I, I use shop vacs obviously for cleaning and construction and we use the bags religiously for cleaning up drywall dust because drywall dust is a very fine dust, much as you've seen in the home, but actually I, I find it a lot more coarse, or a lot coarse, a lot more fine than a, your standard dust in a home. And that bag will collect it all. And when the bag is full, you throw it away, you put a new bag in and you have now have a clean filter. It's just a one time use thing. The downside of that to using it on a Lego is that if you were to dislodge a part and that part would get into the vacuum, it's very hard to retrieve that from within the bag itself. Whereas if you're using a vacuum that has a cyclonic action or some sort of other filter, if you dislodge or vacuum up pieces, you can reclaim those and not waste them. So there's a give and take in both and, and, uh, and it is what it is. So. Just like our home, we're talking about cleaning our filter. If we're cleaning our filter and our vacuum, we're gonna be more efficient with that as well. So so, number, so we'll talk about that cleaning. You can use the the uh, dusters or whatnot, and those, those help to do a lot. Um, some people have used air pressure using a nozzle or a, to blow the dust off, and that can help in some, some of the smaller areas, but you really, you wanna be collecting that. So using a some sort of nozzle to spray 
to dislodge the dust and collect it at the same time is a good idea. So, and that pretty much wraps up cleaning as far as the vacuums go. That, those are pretty much the best way of doing it. You can take them apart and you can wipe them down, and that's a lot more uh, difficult to do. Um, whereas if you walk around with a feather type duster, you know, once a week and you, and you get the larger, you know, majority of the stuff off and then once a month you take a vacuum and you go back and you get the um the small the tighter areas or the larger collect you know the larger dust bunnies and such you know that's going to be it we're really we want to get into a, a habit or a, you know a pattern of uh correcting small discrepancies you know a small layer of dust at first doesn't look like much but that small layer when it gets an eighth inch thick becomes a, a huge problem so if we can develop a schedule and stick to that in our cleaning of our Lego, we'll take a lot of the difficulty off of our shoulders. You know, once a week we're getting in there with a brush and we're dusting off the majority of the models. And then once a month, maybe vacuuming some of the uh, higher prone areas to collect dust in the nooks and crannies, get those dust bunnies out, you know, cobwebs and such like that once a week. That's going to save us headache if we're trying to do it once a year or so. And it doesn't take long, maybe a couple minutes, five minutes, you know, on a Saturday or a Sunday, you know, if you can set aside some time to go and dust things off and clean things. Um, I know when I had a house before, we swept and vacuumed once a week. That's a good time is to go through and dust everything off the counters, then go back and vacuum, and then you have the rest of the day to do whatever you want. So that pretty much wraps up cleaning. Uh, and now we're going to get into washing. Now, <clears throat> washing is uh, is probably controversial on how we wash our Lego. And uh, I do it in the washing machine. And um, to do that, I use garment bags. And so they come in two varieties. These are pretty big. Um, this is a, a medium mesh and then a fine mesh. So, no Lego is going to get through this fine mesh. And uh, a lot of the uh, smaller, like, lightsaber bars or minifig hands, they will get stuck and go through this. So, I use those in combination to wash in a washing machine. Now, I've seen other people that will wash in a tub. You can soak uh, your Lego. You can pour them in a tub and soak them with a mild dish detergent, agitating that up, let it soak, um, do it into a rinse. So if you fill up a tub with soapy water, like you would do dishes, soak them in that, tump, you know, strain them or drain them off and then rinse them into a tub of clear water and then air dry. And uh, what I do is I like to lay out towels and let them and lay them out in a layer and let's let them dry over 24 hours and that will help. Um, but the same thing as far as the dishwasher, I never use the dishwasher personally. I know people have in the past, but I use the washing machine. And what I do is I set, and I have, I've used both the front loading and top loading. Um, the front loading uh, is the probably the easiest because you don't have to worry about an agitator bar. On the top loading, a lot of time you have that agitator bar in the middle. So you need to find a cycle that doesn't activate the agitator bar. The washing machine that I have right now does not have that feature. Um, all the cycles use the agitator bar. So what I found for my current model, and you have to experiment to see what you have, um, the delicate setting is uh, basically it'll agitate it like three times and then it like sets and then it soaks, you know, waits like 35 seconds and it does it again. So it's very gentle and that's in the delicate setting. So I'll, use, I'll send up, you know, three of these into on you know on low and it, at low agitation on the delicate cycle with a minimum amount of uh, laundry detergent so for example if i was supposed to use for this given load of laundry you know in that same level of water you know three or two ounces or whatever i usually a quarter of that so most of the time a full cycle for me is like one ounce of uh, detergent and that's enough you're not going to get the soap residue to stick to the brick. It's not going to stay on the brick after it goes through the cycle. And real, we're not really cleaning uh, large chunks of mud and such. We're really just getting some of the cake stuff off. And I found that the delicate cycle, because it agitates a small section and then it, it'll set, settle, 
you know, you, that's in a 10 or a 15 or a 6, you know, 20 minute cycle, that's enough soak time that most of the dirt is coming off. Now I have, there's some Lego in my collection that was found in mud and stuff like that. That needs to go through a different process. So we're talking about just like, you bought this batch of Lego, you don't know what's in it, and uh, you just want to wash it. That's a good. That's a good method that I use, and I use that for 100% of all my uh, collection. Is it goes through that same process. So let's talk about a little bit about the method I use for sorting and washing used Lego. Now, this is a Millennium Falcon set, but let's just pretend this is a batch of used Lego that I have just received in. Um, I bought this on Facebook Marketplace or I found a garage sale, and I'm gonna go through the process of cleaning this product. So what I do is I go through a primary sort. So I'll go take this batch of Lego, and I don't know what is in it. It could be, it could be Lego, there could be Mega Block in here, there'll be other toys, there could be uh, pieces of cookie or candy or all kinds of random stuff. And I'll put that through a primary sort. So what I do is I'll take, I'll take that sort and I'll go through and I'll separate out. Now I know I have, this is not very much, but say I have 160 gallons or 200 gallons of Lego to go through. And like I said before, I really want to keep plates and bricks separate because I use those the most. The minifigs and all the other little detail parts, those are nice. Those are necessary. But for me, a vast amount of my collection is bricks and plates. So what I do is I'll go through a primary sort. And what I'm looking for is I'm separating out Anything that's not Lego, one. So, and I either that toy will go into a collection. I'll donate that to uh, you know another school or daycare or whatnot, or just taking it to the goodwill. And then I'll have trash. So, and personally, anything that's broken, I put in the trash. I don't. I used to collect the broken bits of Lego. Um, the intent was to make a junkyard or whatnot. I don't have time for that. So I just, I don't want to store that. So I just throw it away. And so, uh, and a lot of brown, like brittle brown, you get broken. I've, I found a lot of uh, dark red broken. So uh, a lot of kids are pretty hard on it. So if I find broken elements, I just throw them away. You know, it is what it is. Move on with my life. Now, if it's really rare, I'll probably reconsider. But most of the stuff I'm, I'm collecting is not rare. So... Anything that's trash, anything that's broken, trash can, anything that's not Lego, that goes into a toy collection, and I'll take that in at a later time. And then I'm separating anything with a sticker on it, because I don't want that sticker element to go through my washing process in the washing machine. Uh, they will not lose their stickers, I found, but that's just a chance I don't want to take. So if there's a sticker element, I'll set that aside and I'll just wash that by hand later. There's not much, um, so it's it's not really that difficult. So when you're talking about you're going through 75 gallons of Lego, you may find four quarts of sticker elements. So it's not it's it's a really uh, small amount that you have to worry about later on. So you, the sticker elements go in there. The other one that I, I I try to not go through the washing process is anything that's transparent, so like a transparent glass element. Uh, they don't have it in here, but a windscreen or anything that's transparent um, because the washing machine does agitate the bricks and you will get micro scratches. And where I was on a regular used brick, that's not a big deal to have small scratches on the outside of the brick or plate or whatnot. And it's not even noticeable on, you know, transparent or not sorry, slopes and tree elements, etc. But on a transparent panel, you know, like a windscreen or a window or any of the transparent bricks, those scratches will uh, reduce the the look of that element. So I separate stickered elements out. I separate toy elements out. I separate trash out. I like to separate the clear panels, uh, anything transparent, set bread that aside. And then I'll separate it into my primary categories as well. So I'll I'll put a bin full of brick, a bin full of plate, and a bin full of Technic, and then everything else. Uh, and the reason why I do Technic is because I find that a lot of my builds, I need to go for those as well, so it's easier if I separate that out. And those can be unique pieces in, in a build, so 
I find those four categories, brick, plate, technic, and then everything else to be what works best for me. And then of course we have stickered, transparent, um, trash, and non-Lego. So that's basically eight tubs you'll set out and you'll sort into that. And it doesn't take very long. You can watch a movie and whatnot. And that's what I use for my primary sort. And then I go through the washing process. So when I wash, you know, I'll fill this bag about half full. So you just keep pouring a Lego element into it until it's about half full. Um, and I use this for bricks and plates. And then I use this for those other elements because it has that finer bag. And I always double up. So if I'm if I fill this halfway full, I'll zip it closed. Then I'll take this full bag and put it in another one, so it's double bag. Because I found that sometimes I either forget or the zipper will pop open, and it gives me a fifty percent chance I still catch the elements. Same with these. I'll put the all the I'll fill it halfway full, close the zipper, and then I'll throw this inside one of these because the chance of anything coming out of this and then actually going through this is pretty ra pretty random. Uh, so I always double bag and you will save yourself the, the one hob happen, you know, you open a bag opens up in the washing machine and then it becomes a nightmare, right? It doesn't damage the machine, but it's just a pain butt to get all that Lego back out of the washing machine. Whether it's a, a front load or top load, the elements are usually too large to go through the sieves inside the washing machine itself. So they don't get bound up into the pump assembly. However, it is a pain to clean out. So oh, I always double bag. And that, I found, is the best method of washing. Um, there are other people that have used a dishwasher. You can put them all out in the same thing. You put them in a laundry bag, lay them out in a dishwasher. The dishwasher does its thing. Um, kind of same process. Very less agitating. If I had a dishwasher and I wanted to use the dishwasher for anything, it would be that transparent element. So I would fill the bag up, lay it in the dishwasher, let those spray nozzles clean and, and dislodge the dirt and debris and etc from the transparent elements without the agitation so and uh i use a gain laundry detergent and uh like i said i use a quarter of what you're you would normally do and that washes out just fine so the key takeaway is the laundry the, the garment bags those things are a godsend and then i just set towels up on the floor and lay it out 24 hours and it will be dry then you can dump it apart or dump it into whatever bins and you continue sorting from there so that's the method i utilize for washing i find it to work the best for me uh even to the point where say i forget i have a something on display and uh it gets just caked in dust and the vacuum cleaner's not dislodging it, and I don't have to take the time to do the bristle brush or whatnot, I can take that whole f model apart, put it in a bag, double bag it, put it in the washing machine, and then it's clean, dried, and then I can put it back. That's basically what happened here. And now I, have, I can rebuild it again. And these parts are 99% I mean, clean. So you don't have to worry about spit or boogers or whatnot on that used lego you know i've i have found everything from animal uh feces dead insects um lots and lots of hair uh and then lots and lots of trash spiders are a huge thing in used lego you'll find spiders all the time they a tub will get left open a spider web will get across the top you know and they you'll end up with dead bugs and such in lego collections so that is the process that I utilize, dusting off models, preventing uh, the dust accumulation by proper maintain, maintenance of my vacuum cleaners and my household furnace, and then if I have to, wash. So, And all of the used Lego I buy goes through the washing process. I just find it, uh, in my head, it works better, <clears throat> but it, it tweets their own. The, the small micro scratches I get from one time to the washing machine is not a big deal. Uh, and then um, it's clean and it can go sorted <clears throat> alright so that wraps up our tips and tricks for March hopefully something that I've talked about today about prevention or about the cleaning techniques or about how I wash my collection um, will be helpful to you um, if you have any other suggestions of course comment down below uh, subscribe to see more content and as always 
Happy building. Uh -huh.